Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment news, entertainment buzz, gist celebrity gossip, showbiz basketballs, and so much more. If it's not on Tea Time, then it's not big enough. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ifeolu Oshunke and Nimi Dekombe. Hey guys. How you doing? I'm great. You, you guys look amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It seems the word came out like, like okay, yeah, but I know I look amazing. I just had to check if he was looking amazing as well, but yeah. Mm. I always look amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure the viewers can testify to that. Chest the ones that believe in the realness. Okay. Is it that you are real or you are amazing? Which one? I'm both. Okay. Let's get into the business of the day. Whoopi Goldberg's cannabis company is shutting down. According to a statement posted on the company's website, Whoopi and Maya, the medical cannabis company co-founded by Whoopi Goldberg and Maya Elizabeth, is closing up shop. This is reportedly as a result of the company's inability to adapt to the new past Proposition 64 in the state of California, which legalized adult use sales as against being solely medical cannabis market. Launched in 2016, its mission was to offer safe, natural relief for period pain through the miracle of medical cannabis. Mm. Um, about the story, I'll just say that first of all, I'm actually surprised that marijuana is not legalized federally in the U.S. Mm -hmm. because they are it's just states by states. Yeah, yeah it's just states by states. So mm -hmm. there are some country, there are some states that marijuana is forbidden. It's prohibited. There are some states that only medical use of marijuana is um, accepted uh -huh. and there are some that recreational and medical is accepted. So I was surprised that, you know, when you think of the U.S., you think that the U.S. is this very liberal state and when you watch their movies, you're like, oh, there must be weed everywhere. Mm. So I was surprised that, okay, in some states, um, marijuana is forbidden, like forbidden medical use recreational use you cannot use with you go to jail if you're if you're caught you know with possession so um i think that the company had a very beautiful you know when i read about the reason why she started the company she said she has granddaughters who go through uh, menstrual cramps and that she used cannabis to help with relieving the pain and then she wanted to sell that to people so that they could um get um the help they need help, the help they need so i think that the beautiful and um, the company had a beautiful initiative even now i feel like the, the initiative is still beautiful yeah, it's i just still beautiful. Yeah. i just don't know why the company is shutting down i think it's unfortunate and also um uh, because i was reading that one of the current um presidential one of the people that are running for president in u.s is saying that the first thing he's going to do when he gets in office is to legalize marijuana federally. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that would also be a good step because I think even in Nigeria, they're also pushing for it. In some, the, some states, yeah, under yeah, states, some yeah. states, yeah. They're pushing for, for the legalization of marijuana. No, not legalization, for commercialization of marijuana. That is, we should be allowed to grow and export because the, one of the best marijuana is growing in those states. So we are mm -hmm. only exporting. We're not legalizing to the point where it's for medical purposes or any of that. We're yeah. just commercializing. But I hope that that conversation would be had because there are medical advantages of cannabis. Yeah, we all know that. So. Okay, if I Basically, um, I don't think this is just about um, the whole whether or not um, they want to continue based on the grounds that um, it's not legal in some state. I think it's more because she's getting a divorce. She, the, our co-founder, Maya, was a spouse and they're getting a divorce and it's affecting and they're both integral parts of this business. Mm -hmm. So there's no way they will be divorced and work together, especially when it's in recordable differences and you don't want to see that person again or you need your distance from that person, whether it's a toxic relationship or not. So they're getting a divorce. Obviously, that is affecting this. Secondly, we brought um, the cramps issues where they wanted yeah. to be using it for menstrual pain and all of that. And that was what it was actually used for initially. But um, the governor of New Jersey was like, there is no way that you will get this approval because we're talking about real pain. So this still boils down to people trivializing the pain of menstruation. But that didn't just happen now. That was like when the company launched. It's part of the whole um policy issues yeah, so for battles is which is it was after that that the same states now has legalized it 
even for recreational and but then it was just for medical and you needed the approval yeah, but to it be was, able it was to for sell. medical purposes for real it refers to them as real pain it doesn't consider menstrual pain yeah that's another pain. topic entirely on it too because yes. i don't know what he is saying but yes. i'm saying that We're talking about amputee somebody that needs to go on that surgery somebody that has their that haven't that had their leg cut for those off. who have never experienced menstrual cramps no that's I why i can't speak from that exactly, angle do you yeah, understand so the person the man that you're talking about he has never experienced menstrual cramps, so you would not be. But I think it's just always that it is a, um, a woman thing that is something that a lot of women will live with your know, their menopause. Yeah. Which is why there was a conversation at some point when they said, how, how would you have men making policies, yeah, policies on women related women issues? Body. Which mm. is what now brought the conversation on having equality on any panel and any committee that is being set up so that every gender has a representative on it, right? So yeah. it's 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 just, um, I don't know if this is solely about and personal then secondly, reasons or in policy. New Jersey as well. Now, mm -hmm. there's another policy in New Jersey that restricts it to adult sales. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you are just 16, 15, of course we have 12 year old girls that are going through menstrual pain. So you want to be prescribing marijuana to them at the age of 12? Do you understand? And this was. But you know, it it came as a product. It's not like just give you. Yeah, they refined it. Smoke. So it's either you're t getting the products that you inhale for it, mm -hmm. or you get the one that you take orally. Like it yeah. was the processed. Don't believe it. It's a controlled drug. Whether or not you. I'm look explaining the, her guess. business. Not. It's not like she. They just give you weed. Yeah. It's a processed product, actually. But we both know how that a lot of people would abuse it. We have 12 year old girls, we have 13 year old there girls. There are no that drugs that people don't abuse. As simple as paracetamol, people abuse it. If you mm -hmm. want to talk about drugs and the abuse, we're talking about simple, controlled drugs. Paracetamol is not controlled. But people abuse it. That's, that's not what I'm, I'm saying. saying that I'm talking you cannot about say abuse of controlled substance. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like abuse of controlled substance. Now the twelve year old girls that work there and they'll, they'll fake having a, a, a the craziest cramp in the whole world just so that they can get some of the supplies you mentioned. Do you understand? So I think that is why the state is also clamping down on all of this. But if you ask me, I think this is coming from a personal space. It's not about the policies that was put in place by the government. And the cash flow has been poor for them because one of their board members was on CNN to talk about it. And he said um, when that policy came up of having adult sales alone, it affected the cash flow. So the business is not even striving as much as it did when but it the launched people in about cash flow is actually another company entirely, not Maya. That's another company that also deals mm, with, with cannabis-related um, cannabis, um, products. No, they, they have to compete with those other companies. Okay. Basically. Anyway, let's just move on to the next story. Tonto DK cautions social media users saying it is not as rosy as it, as it looks online. Um, she said, and I quote, quick advice for young hustling people. A lot of you come on social media to see people who are having a great time with exotic trips and vacation and you slip into depression. What you don't know is that many people plan and save towards trips. Some people plan a year before or even two. A beautiful photo that shows a vacation might be a result of saving for many years. Don't be deceived into thinking it's that easy. It is not. End of course. Mm -hmm. I like that she's in the news for something good. As in, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone should actually listen to what she's saying right now because it's really important. You just go on people's page and forget about traveling. You just see that they're looking good and you feel, oh, I don't want my life to be like this. But you don't know. I mean, that picture was taken probably in the space of five minutes out of 24 hours. So you don't know exactly what is going on in anybody's life by going on their social media pages. And like we always say, people will show you the good parts. They will never show you the bad part, except for those few people that decide to use their story as uh, their own personal story as lessons for other people you know so don't let social media push into depression yeah. i think there are several advantages of social media mm -hmm. but there are also disadvantages and one of the disadvantages is the fact that social media only gives you a glimpse it doesn't give you the whole picture mm -hmm. so you're seeing a glimpse of somebody's life on social media and you're thinking that this is the entire picture of the person's life you see and what people don't realize is that some people there are pictures that they post on social media is created mm -hmm. they are putting out a particular content for a specific purpose for example if you're a vacation they're creating blogger, an image exactly they're creating an image if you're a vacation blogger of course you're going to have several pictures where you're going on different trips some of these um vacations you are being paid for you are working 
So mm -hmm. that is like your own work. So I think people should realize, you know, that it's fanciful what you see on social media, but realize that that is just like a ten percent of somebody's life. That is not the entire Sometimes picture. It's not even up to ten. It's not even up to five percent. So it's just a glimpse into their life. So people should not just be overwhelmed and fall. I, I, because so many people, because um, I think that there has been a rise in depression, especially in this social media age. And it's because um, we get so caught up with the things that we see on social media, the flashy lifestyle, and then we wish that our lives were like that. We don't appreciate the things that are in our own life, which, which reminds me of um, one of the, I've forgotten the person, I was saying um, online love and offline love. Mm. There was one actor that was advising his um, colleagues. I've forgotten his name. Mm -hmm. So most of the time we tend to focus. I remember on who you're talking things. about, but yeah, it wasn't as remember. reasonable as you're saying it. So let's <laughs> not get into it. No, 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 no. You're in Fabi. That was CDQ who said he had so many people that would fight for him no, no, offline. No, 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 not that no, one. The one that was advising the actor is, that was saying yeah, that um, you should try to keep your love. That you know some people that they know their houses, but um, their friends on social media and they, they don't friends, know. But they don't know each other. So it's very easy for you to get caught up. I think that oh, this is this this person is in a very very glamorous life and then you realize that it's just social media they're just giving you a picture they are painting a picture for you to see and you're becoming depressed because of that so so basically i think um depression is a mind state i know a lot of people would see it differently it's a mind state and it's a serious disease and it's something that you sometimes bring upon yourself especially when it comes to social media i'm not talking about the people that are actually depressed by real life situations so um if you feel the need to be pressed by other people's lifestyle then i see it as you having a problem on your own so you need to work on yourself first before you can work on that depression so what Tonto dk is saying right now is absolutely valid because a lot of people that you see taking trips around the world some of these trips are totally paid for they don't even mm -hmm. pay for some of this thing because some of them are influencers someone like Tonto dk they can invite her to dubai and tell her that okay the next week you have to be in france to do something different from us and then you people see all of that you're like oh this girl is living her best life and you sleep into depression because you're also an actress and you're like this girl hasn't even been in the movie for years so how is she getting this money and then you sleep into depression so it's not um social media is not real life get to know people get to know their situations get to know how they make some of these things yeah we have these um motivational speakers that will tell you i'm successful i've done this i've done this in the space of two weeks but they never tell you exactly how they got these things done so you need to be sure of how exactly are you willing to do some of these things that they put on social media to achieve some of these things that they put on social media because a lot of them even do things that they are not proud of themselves to even be there so aside the savings aside the planning a year plan two years and all of that there are so many other things that go into the lifestyle you see on social media so um i think um a lot of people should just be grateful, love yours. There's no life that's better than yours. That's just the truth. Yeah, so I, I think I'll just um, jump in because you made a statement that I didn't really agree with. Okay. When you said that um, you feel like people who are depressed because of social media, they kind of like bring it on themselves or... Yeah, that, I did that. Say was that. what you said. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that when it comes to mental health, you cannot really um, define what triggers people. There are different things that trigger people. It could be their childhood problems. It could be um family it could be finance finances mm. and it could also be social media so when people are triggered into depression because of social media i won't say they specifically brought it upon themselves you don't when it comes to mental health it's very very sketchy you don't know what affects i can be on social media on there and i'll be so unbothered when i see people's lifestyles but there are some people that it would affect them it's not necessarily because it's their fault i think it's just we can't really um say for sure what causes people to feel affected by these things, but it affects them. And I won't say that it's necessarily like that they brought it upon themselves, because people already feel a huge sense of guilt for feeling that way. So I just wanted to- I don't see it as a that. sense of guilt. I see it as a sense of inferiority complex, because you have to have a certain inferiority complex before somebody else's lifestyle would begin to bother you. Now, and I'm sure if you speak to a lot of um, specialist therapists, they would tell you that, wait, do you have a complex? Do you feel um, compelled 
to live up to a certain standard. These are questions they would ask you about your background before they even know those things. And then they start working based on your past, your background, to even help you on those situations, which is why I'm saying you brought it upon yourself because no, the brought it upon yourself is what I had an having issue. Now we've you also had with, like it's your fault. No, that you're no, feeling no. You're taking me out of context okay, when you feel. Should clarify. Maybe no, I don't need to clarify. I just need to explain that um, when I say bring it upon yourself, it is the is what you use your social media for at the end of the day. Who are the people you are following? If you know that you have certain situations that can trigger your past, your thoughts, and all of that, why follow those people? Which is why we're saying that, okay, when you're on social media, the different reasons, the people that are cashing out on social media on a daily, are you following such people? Or are you following those that are living the glamorous lifestyle and comparing people your life? that are cashing out on social media are also living the glamorous also life. Living like the there, life. So there is, there is, in fact, the lines of social media yeah, is now but, very but you blurry. Know, you that know, that you cannot say, I will follow this, I will not follow this, and you will still not see things. See, so glamorous. what she's trying to say is that this thing is very, even the doctors that are in charge of mental yeah. health will tell you it's difficult for them to even understand it. But all we just need is to understand where people are coming from and just keep putting out advice like Tonto yeah, has done and to done. hope that it works because mm. sometimes people just can't help themselves. They just want better and you see cases of um, um, someone that you feel has it all that is still depressed. And sometimes even social media is still the trigger in a case of, oh, seeing No, no, no that's a different ball game entirely. I'm talking about social media and people that fall into depression or slip into depression through social like media. We need to go on a break, though. To say that yeah. he was also depressed. From social media. From Let's social go on a quick break, also. actually. When we come back, we'll have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right <laughs> oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, welcome back. This is CLT Time on Plus TV Africa. Nicki Minaj accuses Mick Mill of abuse, and uh, Mick responds by accusing her of supporting her abusive brother and allegedly tried to bribe her brother's way out of jail. So this Nikki make social media fight started after McMill liked a post on Instagram where Nikki's um, husband was being shaded. Nikki reacted by posting several images of Mick on her Instagram story, some with a clown um, emoji um, covering his face. And then in one image, Nikki blasts Mick and accused him of beating women. She also took the fight to Twitter to share same images and messages and a tweet claiming McMill has been beating um, has been tweeting about her man for a year now, talking about her man blocking Mick. Then Mick responded by setting the whole Twitter house ablaze, saying, the only way you can try to kill my career is to say I beat women. Talk about your brother convicted of rape and you being new and paid off his lawyers. Um, your little brother touched that little girl too. You know I know. You want me to, you want me to crash with your boyfriend and I won't, end of quotes. Nikki responded saying, you beat your own sister and taped it, spit on her and taped it, kicked me in front of your mother and sent her to the hospital and some unprinted lines I cannot read out right now. But mm. <clears throat> it is uh, serious. Mm -hmm. And Nimi? Yeah, um, to be honest, I just feel like a lot of people have been saying that all this beef that Nicki Minaj and Nick Mill have been having, mm. yeah, are they not over each other yet? Because I still, I just don't get it. Like, um, because this is not the first fight that they're having this year. They still had an altercation in January mm -hmm. when um, Nicki 
her husband, um, Kevin Petty, and Mikmil. They had an altercation, and Mikmil had to be dragged out of the store because the, the story was sketchy. I think it was photos from the store that she was using now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's photos from that store that mm -hmm. she was using now. And then it all started because he liked a picture of a, Someone a, a she husband. Did, yeah. she, I'm like, why are they acting? They are both acting like children, going back and forth. But I'll just touch on what they accused each other of. Nicki Minaj accused um, Mikmil of beating her, which is a serious accusation. Mm -hmm. And Mikmil accused, because Nicki Minaj's brother has been sentenced. Convicted, yeah. yeah, he has been convicted of the rape. And he has accused her of covering up or trying to, you know, cover up the rape. So those are two huge accusations that they have levied against each other. And the drama is just... So some say that, um, for those that have been following them religiously, yeah. they say that um, Mick has constantly been throwing subtle shades yes, at um, Nikki and Petty, and she's been ignoring. Mm -hmm. So this is blowing out of proportion because she actually responded. And um, you always feel like, oh, is it this small thing? But they're yeah. saying it's been happening and she's been ignoring. So he liked the picture that is shading um, Petty, right? And now she's Mrs. Petty, right? Yeah. But if someone comes out to say you are a woman bitter, mm -hmm. right? You should come and respond to being a woman bitter. Not why are we now Bringing judging up, Nikki uh, for what the brother did? Are they now? Do we? Is there a, a, if, now that he's convicted? Is Nikki going to be convicted alongside him? It's it's a personal thing, and I don't even understand why you'd come out to now spew things that you were privy to why you guys were still in a relationship. So if that is the case and Nikki was trying to cover up, you as a good citizen of the world, I be ambassador of goodwill, yeah. and you saw it is wrong, did you report? Did you call her out? What you did was cover it up with them and you said that's the reason you left her. Mm. Why did you stop at leaving? You said you're fighting for justice. Why yeah. couldn't you fight for justice for that small... And report it. You know, and report it. And we know, yes, you had something reasonable to do, mm. but now you're painting so many pictures and you're making it look like you're really trying to cover up um, the idea of you being... A woman bitter. I don't know what is going on, but this is more like a bitter air situation, yeah. and they, they really need to stop. Well, you look at their history together, and if you look at how they started, they were so in love. He was singing praises of her. Mm -hmm. She was singing praises of him. I think she he called her his baddest. She said he's the realest. You know, when the <laughs> when it was still sweet, they were That's full the lyrics, of right? Ah, mm -hmm. they were full of love. They were full of adoration towards each other, and now it's just bitter, 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 angry, 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 and it's just like. They are going for each other's heads, and I'm like, uh, it has been. And he finally years. admitted that a woman is pregnant for him. Yeah, so. he, he admitted Fair. that a woman is pregnant for him. Um, secondly, um, I said secondly. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've still said your first yeah. in our mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, because um, at the end of the day, yeah, do we actually get over any relationship? I do. We think we do. I do. It's not. Think. No, we think we do because the moment you see that person again. Memories flashback. Oh, now, sure. second, no, secondly, no, 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 secondly, secondly, when people come at you with certain things, it's part, like we've established, it's part of the hip-hop culture. Nicki Minaj is part of the hip-hop um, community where somebody throws a shade at you, you have to respond, no matter how dirty it is. Mm -hmm. We've seen men that have gone against each other talking about their sisters, talking about their mothers, talking about their wives, talking about their personal life. We've seen story of Adonai where Pusha T spoke about Drake and things mm -hmm. we did not even know. And hip -hop those are men. Hmm? I said hip-hop beef culture. Oh, okay. So, um, and those are men that have actually gone against each other and they've said they spilled so many things so at the end of the day yeah i just feel like it is still part of the culture now these people are beefing let's forget the fact that um they were once dating but mick already said it like you want me to clash with your boyfriend now we were not privy to the fact that McMill used to beat Nicki Minaj because she never told us any of that, no, right? She did. She had spoken she, up about it. On about our about radio. domestic, yeah, on the radio. And she and he said it that the only way you can kill my career is by saying so. If you're following up on the um, Nicki Minaj brother sentence in I think to about 24 years imprisonment and all mm -hmm. of that, you would know that Mick actually tried to cover it. I said Mick, um, Nicki Minaj tried to cover it for a while. And, How um, did she try to cover it for a while? Getting in lawyers, did. paying for the lawyers, doing all of that. And she also wrote a letter. Talking about how he's a good person, how he's a good citizen. Exactly. Again, so so wait, 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 hold did. on. Are we going to blame Nikki 
for I, I I don't want to believe that she was in the room while her brother yeah. was assaulting or molesting the, the girl, child. right? Let's at least establish that but, she was not in the same room. So if a person is my brother and he comes to me to say I am innocent, the best I can do, even if I don't get him a lawyer, the state will give him a lawyer. Mm -hmm. The best I can do is to get him a lawyer and try to believe him. I mean, he is my brother. But right now that everything, even the expensive lawyer could not save could you and it's clear that you are, uh, um, what's it called? Yeah. Guilty. You're a rapist. If she now continues defending him, that is where anyone should raise an eyebrow to say, what are you doing? But I don't think anyone should blame her for believing that he wasn't a rapist when she was not in the room while he was raping anybody. No, that's, because we that's are not even related she did to. No, now this guy is telling you that she knew, and they were in a relationship. And, and saying, the and fact that she knew means Mickey knew, right? What? The fact that she knew he said that's means why he left her, that he tried to talk her out of it, and that that's part of the reasons why he left her. I'm not supporting Mickey Mill, I'm not supporting Nicki Minaj. I'm just trying to let you know that look, the, the crazy is things. Quite dicey. Yeah, it's dicey. It's the dicey. crazy it's things that friends. you spill, especially in the heat of the passion. If mm -hmm. somebody is talking about your career, you beating up a woman, you doing this, you doing that, of course, you want to. Hit them below the belt as well. So I don't see it as childish if you ask me. I'm just seeing it as two people that are still bitter about their relationship and they're trying to get at each other whichever yeah. way they can. That's just how I That's see it. I, I that have a strong feeling that this new auntie, the new baby mama, or to be baby mama, right? She will come out a few years down the line to tell her whole story, and everybody will be like, when Nikki said it, <laughs> nobody paid attention. I feel like that is what's going to happen, but may God keep us alive. That's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching, and um, you can catch up on all this conversation by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Arto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always will go to my co-anchors, Nimi Dekombi, and Ife Oluwash Okeye, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us.